Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good? You guys sound like you're still asleep. How's everybody doing? Good? Good. I'm a high energy kind of guy, so I need a lot of energy. Give you guys a round of applause. Come on. Let's start with a round of applause. There you go. You guys are great. You guys are great. I want to make sure you guys understand today I'm going to be speaking about Number one, myself, I'm going to give over a, a couple principles that, that um, I didn't make up, but I follow every day, and I'm, I'm going to pass those on to you, so hopefully you can follow, and you can move over in, in, into, into the level of success that you choose to be, okay? And then I'm going to give you guys a briefing on where I am now, okay? First, uh, first let me start off by uh, first finding out more or less where you guys are from. Where are you guys from? In, in the neighborhood? You guys are from the neighborhood? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Jackson Heights, yes. Yes. Corona, Elmhurst, Queens basically, right? Okay, well, I'm, I'm one of you. I grew up in Jackson Heights, okay? So I'm from Jackson Heights. Who's here from Jackson Heights? There you go, represent, whoop! There you go. Okay, I grew up on 94th Street between 35th and 37th Ave. Everybody know 94th Street? We used to call it, we used to call it back in the day when we were cool, we used to call it NFS, because it was like a little crew. NFS, NFS, all it stands for is 94th Street. <laughs> That's all it stands for. It doesn't stand for anything special. Um, so I'm one of you guys. I, I, I am from the neighborhood. I'm also Hispanic. My pa I'm a first generation born here. My parents immigrated from the Dominican Republic. Anybody here Dominican? Yeah? Oh, wow. A lot of them. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I speak English. Y también hablo español. Dominicano. Not, not really Spanish. This is like Dominican, uh, the whole different dialect. Um, so today I wanted to just speak to you guys about where you start off and where you can end up. You know, where you can end up. I want to inspire you guys to, to think big so you can be able to live large, okay? Very, very important. Now, I started, what was that? Did I achieve my goals? I've achieved a lot of my goals. Do I have more goals? I have gigantic goals, which I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm still, I'm, I'm still fighting. Everybody still has their own goals. People here that have goals. You guys are what? Uh, what grade is this? Seventh. Seventh? So you're halfway, you're halfway there. You're, you're halfway through junior high school. Halfway. You got one more year and then you go to the high school. <sighs> Anybody intimidated with high school? No. Don't be. It's nothing. It's easy. It's a breeze. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. You guys will enjoy it. It's one of the, one of the, one of the best parts of life. What's that? It is the best years of your life. It is. Um, so... You guys can relate, because you have goals right now. Your goals are, in seventh grade, if I remember correctly, is when you gotta start choosing which high school you're gonna go to. Yeah. And is when you start taking tests for, for placement, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can see exactly where it is that you're gonna end up, and what grades and what stuff like that you're gonna, you, these are the grades that they use to allow you to get into the, to the high school. So this is very, very, very important. How did everybody do this year? Good. Good? Good yeah. Awesome, awesome. Did everybody reach their goals? Did anybody have goals? Very important, not a lot of people set goals. That's one of the things that you guys wanna make sure you do. It's important to set goals. Very, very important to set goals. All right, so let me give you a little bit of background about myself and why I'm here and why you should listen to me. Because it's like, who is this guy? This guy just comes here and, and just, just talks and I'm supposed to listen just because. It's a little piece of chalk here. Let me put my name on the board, okay? I can write over this, okay? You guys can still see it. My name is Jason and my last name is Graciano. Graciano, yeah, I heard somebody mumbling my name. What happened? You heard it? Yeah, it's familiar. It's familiar? Yeah. I'll tell you guys at the end how it's familiar, okay? But let me start off, let me start off with where I came from. Okay, so grew up in Jackson Heights. Parents immigrated from the Dominican Republic. And with that idea of we're going to make it, we have a new opportunity. We're in America, you know? And then I'm one of five. It's five children growing up in Jackson Heights. The, be the apartments there are not gigantic. I didn't grow up in a, in a gigantic apartment. It's a two bedroom apartment, seven people. And Dominican families usually invite other people over, right? <laughs> Dominican families usually invite other people over. So it was, in a, in one, in a, two, in a two bedroom apartment, there was, it was easy if there was eight, nine people. No problem. That's how you learn how to stick together. Very, very important. Learn how to stick together. So my parents managed to open up a restaurant. It was called Chato Restaurant on 95th Street and 37th Avenue. 95th Street and 37th Avenue. And that's where I learned the basic fundamentals of business. 
Okay, that's where I learned how to, how to become a business person. Because being a business person, you don't have to go to business school. You don't have to do anything extraordinary. It's dealing with people. That's all it is, is de dealing with people. And when, when I was getting started in, in, in my father's restaurant, I was a delivery boy. So I would leave from school, right? I didn't go to the school, I went to ISO 27, which is a bum, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. I went to uh, uh, ISO 27, I used to get out of school and go straight to do deliveries. I used to do so many deliveries to the point where if I would see your face, I'd be like, 3525 94th Street, apartment 3C. <laughs> and I would know people's faces and I would relate it with an apartment. I was like, 4D, I know who you are, you know? And they knew who I was. So it was like everywhere I was running around, I was starting to get a little bit more popular in, the, in a couple of, of block radius or in the, in the small community that we had right there. So I started there doing deliveries. I got promoted or I moved up to doing the cash register, you know? And the whole business was run, the whole restaurant was run. My mom, my dad, my older brother, myself, and one worker, one employee, five people. Small business, right? And in that small business, I learned so much, and I'm so thankful for being involved in the business, because I'm sure that some of, some of you guys' parents um, have businesses or have their jobs that sometimes they need some help, and you might not always want the help, because you're like, I don't want to help you do this, I want to help you do that. Help them. You'll learn from it. It's a great, great, great gift that you have to be able to help somebody that's older than you so you can be able to be ready for life when it comes. It just automatically, life just, boom, hits you. Hi, I'm life. I'm here to take over, you know? So it's, it's good if, as a preparation tool that you guys can do that. So at about the age of 13, I was like, I wanna be in business for myself. I'm a man now. You guys are what, 12, 13 years old right here? 13? So at about your age, I'm like, no, I'm not doing deliveries anymore. No. I'm gonna do my own thing. My own thing was basically in front of the restaurant, right in front, I started selling, I don't know if you guys know what, what's called a June June, those frio frio, those little ices, those little, uh, the, the, the little icy with juice, and it's ice and juice, that's, that's all it is, basically, right? So my parents said, okay, I'll support it, no problem, no problem. I, mean, I thought I was in business for myself, but even though they bought the products, they, they did everything, and I just like stood there. <laughs> I got really cool biceps that summer. But it's like, Arr. <laughs> So I was selling ices for a buck. I was selling ices for a dollar. And I felt great being able to connect with people and actually generate my own money and being able to do my own thing. I automatically, I had this taste of control. And I was like, I can control whatever I want to do. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so then I was like, okay, no problem. No problem. After I, uh, when I went to my elementary school in 149, and, and then I was, it was time for me to go. Hey, you guys know 149? Yeah. Chris McAuliffe, yeah, I went to 149. I'm telling you, I'm from the same neighborhood. I'm one of you guys. This is you, fa fast forward 10, 15 years from now, okay? So after I went to, to, to elementary school and I graduated, and I was, it was time to go to junior high school. All my friends, everybody came here. ISO 145. And where did I go? ISO 27, Louis Armstrong Middle School. I didn't like it. I hated it. It was me and two other people from, <laughs> IS, from 149 that went to 227. So I had to start all over. What a struggle. What a struggle. And I thought it was something that was really bad and it ended up being one of the greatest gifts. Ended up being one of the greatest gifts. I got to expand the people that I know. I got to expand that. So I ended up knowing a whole new field of people, right, in junior high school. Then from junior high school, right, then you go to high school. So all my friends from here, from IS-145, most of them went to their zone school. What's their zone school? Their zone school from where I lived was Newtown. I actually wanted to go to Newtown. Not because it's a great school, it's not a good school. I, I, I wanted to go to Newtown, but I, I ended up going to John Bowne. Oh my God, all over again. Here we go again. And then again, I see it as, damn, this is, this is no good. This is no good. Out of 220, from 227, it was me and three other people that went to, to uh, John Bowen. So here I am again, starting brand new. I'm thinking it's something bad. Meanwhile, it's a gift. It's a gift. I got to meet some incredible, huh? Um, it's a bad school, but you made it. I made it great. I, I listen, it's, it, it is what you make of it. It absolutely is what you make of it. Your perception is gonna, is gonna determine your reality. It absolutely is. So I went to um, high school, and me along with these three other people, which I, I didn't even know, I just know that they went to my old school, now, here, here's a little bit of a, of a story for you guys. I went to that school, I didn't know anybody. 
and it was scary. That's why I asked you guys, you guys scared? You shouldn't be scared. Because it's a piece of cake. I learned it was a piece of cake afterwards. And, every, and all you got to do is be friendly, be nice, be outgoing, be positive, And everybody's there with you, you know? And I went from knowing nobody to when I graduated high school to being uh, the most, the, one of the most popular, if not the most popular in school. I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, I mean, in business, what do you want to do? You want to have, have a business that everybody knows or you want to have a business that nobody knows? You want something that everybody knows. And if I'm in business for myself, I got to make myself known. Right? So in high school, I, I, was, uh, I ended up prom king, which is pretty cool. I didn't think I was going to win that. I was like, I ended up being prom king. I'm no king. I ended up being prom king, right? I was class clown. Go figure. Class clown. People think class clowns. You're never going to make it. Class clown. No. But you got to have a great attitude. You always have a great attitude. I make fun of everything. I'm always laughing. I'm always joking around. Even when it's customers. I'm sitting with customers at my current job. And it's all about a joke. And just joke. And just make it easy. It makes it that much easier. Or do you want it to be tense and uncomfortable and be angry? <laughs> you don't want to be an angry person. It's okay. So I was a class clown. I was also a prom king. And one of the other things which was pretty cool, this I actually uh, liked because I put a lot of work into it. I put my heart into it. I put a lot of dedication into it. I was on one of the teams, right? They didn't have too many teams. I used to like playing football, but they didn't have a football team. So I was on the weightlifting team, okay? I used to lift weights, a lot of weights. A lot of weights. I used to, pff, crazy. And that's something that I enjoy, but it's not easy. It's difficult. And, and being able to grow from, I'm, I can lift this much, to lifting that much, to lifting that much, to lifting that much. And it resembles life so much. Because you might have a little problem right now in your life that you might see as, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. Oh my God, this is so dramatic, oh my God. And it's a small little problem. And then you graduate after you take care of that problem to being able to take care of a bigger problem. And then when you take care of that, being able to take care of a much bigger problem because problems are going to come in life, and it's how you deal with them that's going to determine where you go, okay? So everybody got that? I used to weight lift, and I had the record for, for the most bench, the highest bench press, the most squats. I had the school record, so everybody knew me. Strongest, most popular, funniest guy. Look at that. Hey, it's me. So then um, go to college, all over again, don't know anybody. Damn. I don't know anybody. I, went to, I started Queensborough, Queensborough Community College, right? Then I went over to Baruch over in, in Manhattan for business. So let me get into the career side because today is career day, right? Enough about me. I just want to relate so you guys understand where I'm coming from. I'm one of you, and you guys are going to take similar paths that I'm taking, that I took, okay? So career-wise, from selling ICs, right? I started selling chicken, then I was selling ICs. Then I wanted to graduate to the next level. I'm about 17 years old and I'm like, I want to be a professional, I want to be a businessman. I want to wear a suit. Where am I going to wear a suit to? I don't know, I just want to wear a suit because nobody wears a suit on 94th Street. And I want to wear a suit. And I was like, I'm going to go out and get myself some suits. I had some cheap suits that didn't match. One, well, the top was one color, the, back, the bottom was another color, but I was wearing a suit. I was wearing a suit because I saw myself as a business person. I saw myself as a professional. And I know that I wanted to wear a suit. So at age 17, I wanted to go out and be a professional, and I thought, for most of the people that I asked, they were real estate agents. So I was like, okay, so if you wear a suit, you were a real estate agent. So let me get into real estate. Got my real estate license when I was 17 years old. So that's not far out from you guys. You guys are 13, that's four years from now. That's right there. It's right there. So at, at, at an early age, you, you start building that structure of I'm gonna be this, and I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna do this, so I'm wearing a suit at age 17. I got my own business cards. It says Jason Graciano, <laughs> professional sales agent. I love that. I was like, wow, I got a business card with my face on it. <laughs> Yo, I used, the, I used the same picture that I used on my passport. So I was like, put that, just put that picture out there. I don't know about that stuff. So I got a business card. I was like, yes, but I'm not selling anything. I'm not making any money, but I got business cards. <laughs> my mom was proud. I was like, okay, great, now we gotta do something. So I'm working, and now I meet difficulty. Boom, another challenge in life. Another challenge, what's that challenge? I'm 17, 18 years old. Most people that are in the 30s, 40s, or 50s that have been saving for 10, 15, 20 years, and they're buying their first house, don't wanna trust a 17 year old or 18 year old with their money, you know? That's a huge decision. And I didn't know that, I was just like, I'm gonna be a businessman, I'm gonna be successful, I'm wearing a suit, I'm wearing a suit, it's gonna work out. It's not the case. I had a partner, I ended up partnering up with somebody 
who was in the business for over 10 years. He was in his like uh, mid to late 40s, right? And he took me under his wing as a mentor, which is one of the things that I want you guys to, to, to understand. It's very important for you guys to find somebody, whether they know it or not, to mentor you. And you could be following and listening and learning from the things that they've done, from the mistakes that they've made, and make corrections without you having to go through the same mistakes. Now, this school, although I didn't go to the school, I have three younger siblings, which is two boys and one girl, all three of them went to the school. So I know that there's amazing teachers in this school. And you guys have the opportunity to use them as mentors and to learn from them, okay? Very, very important. You don't want to go through the same mistakes that everybody else has gone through. You can have that, that extra edge. You can have that, that step ahead that you can do things that nobody else has done before because you're special, okay? So I'm, I'm selling real estate. Well, at least I thought I was selling real estate. I was a real estate agent. At least I had the title. Then I started selling a couple houses with, uh, with my, the friend of my, my mentor, with the help of my mentor. And now I want to move on to bigger and better things. I was like, okay, I can sell them a house, but I want to do more. I want to do more. So I got into mortgages. So I was doing mortgages and real estate. So I was doing that, and I was like, okay, great. That's awesome. So, so far, so you guys are following. I sold chicken. I sold June June, the Frio Frios, right? Sold houses. Now I'm doing mortgages, okay? And then I'm like, I want to do more. I want more. So I started uh, selling life insurance. Life insurance now, right? Started selling life insurance. Um, and for that, you gotta get tested, you gotta get a, 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 a certificate, you gotta be licensed to be able to get, to sell life insurance. So I'm starting selling life insurance, great, no problem. So now I sell you a house, I do your mortgage, and I sell you life insurance, but I want more. I want more. What else? I start selling knives. What? <laughs> what? Exactly. It's knives. What are you talking about? Knives. Well, I needed something that I could do on my own time. I needed something that I could do on my own time because I was starting college. I'm starting Queensboro now, and now I, I, I needed something where it's a flexible schedule. And selling knives, they're like, what are you doing selling knives? <laughs> the cheapest set of knives was 600 bucks. Oh, oh my God. They're expensive knives. The cheapest set of knives. Now, I had, we had a set that was $2,500. So they go from 600 to 2,500 bucks for a set of knives. You think it's easy convincing somebody to buy a set of knives for 600 bucks? It's hard. It's hard. And I would have to sit at the kitchen table and sit at the kitchen table and speak to people and explain to them that these are, these are valuable, they're very important, and they are. They have a lifetime forever guarantee, which is awesome. And the knives in and of themselves are great. I'm not here trying to sell you knives. <laughs> I'm, just showing you, I'm just showing you the path that you have to take to get to where you want to get to. You, don't, you never know where it is that you're gonna go. You never know. You never know what it is that you're doing now that's gonna get to what it is that you want to get to, okay? So, I'm selling knives, real estate, mortgages, chicken. I'm not selling chicken anymore, but I used to. I used to sell a frio frio, okay? You never know where you're gonna end up. So then I'm like, hey, I want to change. I want something different. I'm starting, I'm starting uh, my second college now. I'm going over to Baruch, and now my schedule is intense. Is intense. I got class from 7.30 in the morning up until 3 in the afternoon, so I need a very flexible schedule. So lo and behold, I walk into Paragon Honda. Okay, that's where I work now, Paragon Honda. Paragon Honda is on Northern Boulevard and 57th Street. It's, you know, everybody know where, where you go pass by Taco Bell, you got Volkswagen, Honda. Everybody knows what the Honda store is? Everybody seen it? Maybe you guys have, maybe your parents, maybe your friends, maybe, maybe uh, uncles, aunts, or, or relatives. You? Awesome, look at that, she's she been to Paragon Honda. That's awesome. So, I started working there because they were able to offer me a flexible schedule, okay? And I was like, this is all I need. So I would go to school from 7.30 in the morning, get out at three, and work from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. I had no life. It was all working, 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 working. But I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be successful. And I wanted to make it. Don't give up. Never. Don't ever give up on your dreams, on your hopes, on what it is that you want to do. I don't know where this is taking me now, because Paragon Honda maybe is just a stepping stone to get something else. And maybe that's going to be a stepping stone to get something else. Am I successful? It depends on who you ask. I feel like I'm super successful. There's people that when you compare me to, that I'm not successful. It all, it all depends. Since 17, I've been wearing a suit, which has been one of my goals. I want to be a professional. I want to be presentable. When I go somewhere, people take me seriously just because I'm wearing a suit. 
And it's important, the way you carry yourself, the way everything, the way you speak to people. So now I'm selling cars. What are my duties? I'm a salesperson. I didn't start as a sales manager. I'm a salesperson. I'm a salesperson selling cars. What are the duties? You got to meet somebody. And within a couple hours, you got to convince that person to spend $25,000, $30,000 on you. Well, on themselves, but with you. And it's, it's fast pace. It's fast pace. So somebody's there. You meet them. Hey, how's it going? This is there. So you're looking at a new Honda. Great. Let me show you the Honda Accord. And you go. You show them a car. You test drive them. Let them get a feel for it. Right? You sit them down and you start telling them why they should buy now, why they should buy now, why they should buy from you. What makes you different? Because you got to stand out. And even, even amongst, even in the school, let's say amongst all seventh graders, how do you stand out? How does each and every single one of you have your uniqueness that makes you stand out, head and shoulders above everyone? Make sure you stand out. You deserve to stand out. You have certain qualities about you that are different from everybody else in here. Everybody here in here looks different, speaks differently, comes from different backgrounds, is going to a different place in life. You gotta make sure you stand out. Very, very important. So I get to Paragon Honda, my main thing is, I need to stand out. One of the easiest ways that I stood out right away, I was the youngest person there. The young, I was only 20 years old. I was 20 years old, so I'm not talking about you gotta be in your 30s to start your career. I'm 20 years old, that's seven years from now for you guys. Seven years, it's right there. It'll happen like this. Seven years seems like a lot, but it's not. It's right there. So, I'm 20 years old, 20 years young, and I'm there, and everybody's in their 30s and 40s. There we go again, just like junior high school, just like high school, just like college. I don't know anybody, and everybody's just different. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know anybody in here. Am I supposed to be in my 30s? Again? Again I'm too young? No, I use that to my advantage. I use it to my advantage, so I started doing things differently. I knew the importance, because I have very limited time, I knew the importance of speed. When a customer comes in, get him in, get him out, get him in, get him out, get him in, get him out, boom, go. And that was one of the things that made me different. And also the professionalism, the level of professionalism that I had, where this is my job and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna treat it like a career. You treat it like a career because you're gonna be there for, for good. And you have a completely different result. Now, I'm the sales manager. I've been a sales manager for about five, six years now. So now I manage that store. Now I'm, I'm in charge of the store. I became the sales manager when I was 22 years old. The youngest sales manager ever hired at the company. Isn't that crazy? The youngest. Okay, you think that's a lot of pressure? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. So what? Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You can do it. You can do it. And that's that attitude that I want you to guys, well, I want to leave with you guys is you can do it. You can do it, you do it anyway, you got it, you got it. You got it within you to be the person that stands out. You got it in you to be the person that is gonna make a difference. So okay, now I'm a manager. Now what's my job? I gotta stand out. I gotta be different. How am I, what am I gonna do that's gonna be differently from the people that came before me? So now my thing is training and being able to develop salespeople, develop salespeople. That's very, very important to me. Like, if I have a team of 10, 15 salespeople and they sell a car a certain way, I want to try and get them to do that the most effectively as possible. Does anybody here do any type of training? No, you don't play, nobody plays sports? You don't have to train for that? Anybody play any, any instruments? I saw you playing an instrument earlier, no? Okay, so you got to do training for that, right? If you, if you just take a drum and you start beating it, is it the same as you sitting down, going over the notes, playing it over and over and over again, you need that training. I don't mean training just like on your job. I mean training, why do you think you get homework? Homework is training. That's training. Why do you guys think you do classwork over and over again? Exactly. Why do you guys think you do experiments? You do experiments to see what happens. If I do this, this and this and this is gonna happen. So it's exactly, and after we have it down packed as a process, then it's my responsibility to train those salespeople to get those things like that. Everybody follow? Yep. Okay, now, I'm gonna start telling you guys why my name sounds familiar. Why does my name sound familiar? Well, I needed to stand out, remember that. I'm always about standing out. I wanna, make, I wanna be different, I wanna be different. So within Paragon, not only am I the sales manager, I mean, I'm the director of Hispanic relations. I, do, I, I speak English, but I also speak Spanish very well, right? So I, I'm in Spanish, maybe some of you guys have heard me on the radio. Have you guys ever heard La Mega? Yeah. Okay, then you, I'm sure you've heard my name. Have any of you guys ever heard Equis 96.3? Yes. Well, I'm sure you heard my name. 
J Hola, les habla Jason Graciano de Paragon Onda. Yeah, that's me. Come on. That's how you know my name. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So how do you, wait, wait. So you mean to tell me that you start selling cars. What does selling cars have anything to do with being on the radio? I don't know. You gotta, you never know where you're gonna end up. You just gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. So now I'm on two radio stations as far as um, commercials, which is La Mega and 96.3. Both of you, both of those radio stations, most of you heard, okay? Yeah. I'm also, I'm on a third radio station. I'm on a third radio station. It's called Radio Wado, right? <laughs> and on that radio station, it's on AM. It's not FM. That's on AM radio, okay? So maybe your parents listen to it. Uh, maybe your, your uncles, aunts listen to it. And on that, on that radio station, I have a 30-minute talk show. 30 minutes. Damn. Yeah, live. <laughs> That's hard. I didn't know how to do that. I could sell cars, but I don't know how to speak on the radio. Everybody's listening to me, and when the on-air thing goes on, <gasps> you're scared. It's okay to be scared. Just go through it. Go through it. You're going to be scared when you're taking a test, when you're taking an important test. You're going to be scared when you walk through those doors that first day. You guys say you're not scared of high school. Yeah, right. Wait till you walk in that first. <gasps> oh, my God. And you're in ninth grade, and you got 12th graders. This is a big difference between ninth graders and 12th graders. It's like you grow up. It's like a huge difference. It's like huge. Ninth graders and 12th graders? It's like a, it's like a 10 year old and a 30 year old. That's how, it's huge, huge difference. But listen, you're gonna be intimidated, you're gonna be scared, and it's gonna be hard. So what, do it anyway. It's gonna be all right, do it anyway. You guys are gonna be fine. So I'm on that, I'm on the, that third uh, radio station, Radio Wallo, which I, I am privileged, I'm, I'm, I'm used as a vehicle in Paragon Honda, I'm used as a vehicle. Now understand, I'm used as a vehicle to get the message across to the Hispanic community, okay? So your parents or uncles or whoever uh, speaks his Spanish has heard me. And you say, yeah, bitch, you go home and say, hey, listen, that guy, Jason Graciano, oh, I know, what, I know how he sounds, I know how he sounds, but you guys probably don't know what I look like. They probably don't know what I look like. Okay, you guys have heard, uh, you guys watch Spanish TV? Yeah. Anybody here? Your mom and dad or whoever watch novelas? Yeah. Uh, have, you heard, have you heard of Univision? Yes. I'm on Univision. Oh my God, holy crap. Yeah, yeah, I'm on Univision, yes. I'm on Univision. What does, now what does selling cars or selling knives or selling houses, how does that lead up to you being on TV? How, I, I don't even understand, how, I, I don't know. It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. And I'm not here to gloat about myself. I'm not here to tell you, oh, look how great I am. It is career day, so I gotta explain to you what my career day, what my career is, and to inspire you that you can, you don't know where you're going. You just gotta keep going. Keep going in that direction. Just, just keep marching forward, marching forward. Be persistent, be persistent. And have that resilience to be able to go forward, no matter what, no matter what. Because there are gonna be tough times. Life is not easy, it's not meant to be easy. It's hard. But what you're gonna realize is that it's worth it. It's worth it. And now I go, I go, let's say for example, I go to a restaurant or I go wherever it is I go, people recognize me and I'm like, that's weird. I was like, I don't know you. It was like, yeah, but I know you. I'm like, okay. It's a, you know, I'm not a superstar. I'm not a, a, a novella actor or anything like that. But you do get a little sense of that little bit of fame where people know exactly who you are and it makes it that much easier for you to be convincing. Now, do you think that I stand out as far as salespeople in the car business? Of course I do. There's nobody else doing that now. Nobody else is on TV, nobody else is on the radio. Nobody else is doing the things that I'm doing. It's not, it's not normal for a car guy, it's called a car guy, it's not normal for a car guy to come to a school to speak to children. It's not normal, I do this for me. I do this for me because I enjoy it and because I understand that you guys are our future. You guys are our future. Okay, now I wanna go, I said I was gonna go over some principles that I was gonna give to you guys for free. This is gold, gold, absolute gold. If you guys remember this, if you want, you can write it down, whatever it is, this is huge, okay? There's three principles that you gotta live with in life. Three, okay? And these are three, I didn't make these up. You can take out your books, you can, you can write it down, go ahead. It's just gold, this is gold, what I'm about to give you, okay? Number one, do right. Write it in, just do right. I make, listen. Do right. Do right. Do what's right. You know in your head, you have a conscience. You know in your head what's right and what's wrong. 
You know the differences between right and wrong. You know what, when, when you're doing something and you have like in those cartoons or in the movies when you have the little angel on this side and you got a little devil on that side, you know what you're doing. And if you feel like you're doing something wrong, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to have consequences. It will come back to bite you. Don't do it. Do what's right. You're going to have a clean conscience. You're going to be able to walk around with your head held high and you'll make the people around you and your parents proud. Anybody here first generation born in, in the United States? That means that your parents came from another country and you're the first person. You, so I relate a lot to you guys. My parents came here because they wanted more for me. My parents came here because they wanted this, their, their children to have the opportunity to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. Because back in our countries, in, they didn't, weren't able to do that stuff. You can't. You could do whatever you want. You have the choice to do whatever you want. And your parents, are, that's why they push you so much. That's why they tell you, did you do your homework? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? Betali <laughs> cuarto. Right? I know, I know, I know how it is. It's very, very important. Do right, do right. You don't want to disappoint your parents. You don't want to disappoint your parents at all. You want to make them proud. Make them proud because you're doing something special. And more importantly, you're doing something that's right. Okay? Number two, second principle. Do the best you can. Do right, do the best you can. Now, what does that mean, do the best you can? Yeah, do the best you can. No, do the best you can in everything you do. If you're, right now, you're sitting in a classroom listening, right? Listen as best you can. Pay attention as best you can. When you're doing your homework, do your homework as best you can. When you're outside playing, play as best you can. When you're playing an instrument, play that instrument as best you can. Everything you do, if you're having a relationship, or you're having a conversation with somebody, or it's a friend of yours, or they're, they're feeling down, or, or they, they, don't, they don't feel like they, they, they want to do anything, I don't want to do anything anymore right now. Try and make that person feel good the best you can. The best you can. Everything you do in life, do it the best you can. That's gold right there, number two. That's number two. Do the best you can. All right? Number three. Everybody ready for what's number one? Do right. Right. Number two. Do number three, I, you guys know it as the golden rule, okay? And it, it doesn't apply only in junior high school. It applies in life. The golden rule is treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat others the way you want to be treated. This is very, very important.